So in terms of materials, what are the emerging technologies? You will find there will be an increased use of renewable and sustainable materials. So uh, increased use of more, more and more renewable and sustainable materials has basically, you know, uh, is going to be one of the driving factors of uh, this technology of compounding. The development of advanced additives and nanocomposites along with development of high performance materials. We look at these points one by one. The first thing is develop increased use of renewable and sustainable materials. So there are different categories of bioplastics, recycled plastics, bio-based additives as well. So epoxy, uh, we get it synthetically, right? But there is a version of bio-based epoxy. There is a version which is bio-based polyurethane, right? So epoxy goes as a flame retardant and uh, a bio-based epoxy would be a bio-based additive. So it's likely to increase in experience compounding. This trend is driven by the need for environmentally friendly products as well as the regulations and policies that promote sustainability. With a growing concern about the environment, the demand for sustainable materials is increasing and extrusion compounding can be used to create new compounds for renewable and biodegradable materials like polylactic acid, polyhydroxy alkanoids, and starch-based materials. In fact, you will find something like PTT is actually uh, you know, gaining a lot of market these days and even PBAT is one of the materials that is gaining importance. And I heard from a lot of companies that they want to actually start compounding PBAT and all uh, to get it approved from the CIPED based labs that we have uh, for biodegradability, right? So you can see there are a lot of images in front of you which uh, basically resemble the thoughts that we have. Uh, and there are a lot of companies that are coming up who are continuously tapping into the recycling and sustainable domains of, uh, you know, circular circularity in plastics. The last point is the development of sustainable materials will be a significant trend in the extrusion compounding industries. Advanced additives and nanocomposites, uh, new additives and nanocomposites with a unique feature and unique properties are likely to be developed for extrusion compounding. So something like advanced flame retardant additives that are more environment friendly, right? So you see these brominated and chlorinated compounds are there. Brominated are more popular, excellent flame retardants. If you look at other chemistries, uh, they might not have the same impact or they might be very costly, right? So advanced flame retardant additives that are more environment friendly. So halogenated compounds are not environment friendly. And effective or nanocomposites with improved thermal conductivity and strength. So requirement in applications where we do not require insulation characteristics in terms of thermal, even for electrical as well. So a lot of work on this front is also going on where we are talking about both thermally conductive and electrically conductive composites which are plastic based. Although plastics is used in applications largely for the opposite purpose. Then there is high performance material. The demand for high performance materials is increasing in various industries such as aerospace and defense. Extrusion compounding can be used to create new compounds with high performance properties such as strength, stiffness and heat resistance. The development of new performance, high performance materials will be significant trend in the extrusion compounding industry. We are talking about materials which can be low in cost with respect to, you know, development uh, via compounding, but it can really hit on the speciality, um, chemical or speciality polymer category, which are extremely high in cost. Now, in uh, emerging technologies in materials, you would also find the use of uh, AIML, that is artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, so we are talking about trying and understand, for example, this concept that I want to share with you. Let's say I, I want to develop a color, right? So if I intensely work in color, there might be a lot of formulations that I must have that has given me X, Y, Z colors. So this formulation, this color, this formulation. So I'm talking about the spectrophotometric color. This formulation, red this, green this, blue this. And if I feed it in an AI ML software, what would it give me? Imagine I want to get a particular color in my compound. I just need to ask, if these are the CIE values. I test the standard and I feed the values. I want to achieve this color. The machine or the, the software, uh, the image, uh, the algorithms that are there will give me the tentative starting point where I will waste around 1000 kgs of material. And I do not need to do that. I'll get a tentative starting point, which I take a first trial and within a couple of trials, I'll be able to reach to my desired color. And maybe even better than that as well. Maybe in the first trial, you get that color. So. These AI ML based uh, algorithms are going to help going forward and there are a few companies who are already working on it. 
So increased use of continuous processing, that is process automation. We all know that uh, processes are liable to human errors. Large number of occasions, people are very assured with automations, wherein if you have given wrong feed, it might falter, otherwise it will keep working well. So third is integration of 3D printing technology, machinery systems to handle complex recycling systems, and advanced machinery that is multi-screw extruders. So the first point is about AIML. So AIML are expected to play a significant role in optimizing the extrusion compounding process. And the idea that I gave you about pigments and all, the same can be implemented for even, so let's say I take select, I want to use polycarbonate and uh, polycarbonate version gives me some 50 megapascal. And I type there that I want to have 75 megapascal. The, the algorithm will tell me what percentage of what filler do I need to take to get to 75 megapascal, thereby saving my a lot of time, a lot of resources, not just time, all the resources, all five ends that I'm talking about, including money, machinery, management, manpower, and, and everything else. So they're expected to play a significant role by analyzing data from sensors and other sources, AI and ML algorithms can identify patterns and make recommendations for process improvements, such as existing temperature, pressure, or material compositions as well. So we took an example of material composition. And we, we talked last about the machinery. So you'd find uh, over here, there are these triple screw extruders, the barrel are also there. So you, would, you can utilize uh, fully intermeshing core rotating screws and have uh, bi or tri-local elements as mixing sections. L by D can have uh, 36 to 52 in bi-local and uh, 32 to 64 in tri-local. So would have a greater output, you'll have better mixing. We are talking about the path and the residence time increasing because what you will see is largely if you are talking about a material, it will travel from here, it will go here, travel from here, it will go here. And again, it will move through the periphery. So your extruder length, which was this, then increases because it is passing through three screws, again, coming back through three screws and then moving forward in the flight. So you get better mixing with fillers and color master batches. And uh, you can look at it from repelletization or regrind uh, from the perspective of P, PP and PET. Next is triple screw extruders. These are non-parallel screws, which are put in a 120 degree angle that you can see. These are fully intermeshing core rotating screws with tri lobal elements, non-linear arrangement, and hence they require a special gearbox with the, the tri lobal uh, tri uh, assembly at a 120 degree angle. L by D can range from 20 to 60, and they provide better mixing. Next are quad screw extruders. So four parallel screws we are talking about. You can see one assembly which is shown on the base uh, again with all the mixing elements and all. So four parallel screws with bilobal elements, which are fully intermeshing core rotating screws. L by D is from 10 to uh, 150. There's one but one machine uh, uh, which is uh, 45 to one in, in uh, college at USA, and uh, you would find the speed at around uh, 2200 RPM, which can be very high. And uh, you need to have modified screw design for this. You get greater output. The pumping is much more and then better mixing is what you will generally observe with uh, these kind of uh, quad screw extruders. Moving forward, you can also have octa screw extruders. So again, you can see the machine in front of you. There are eight screws, fuller, fully intermeshing, uh, over rotating screws, L by D 10 to 150 again. So the length is going to be quite high with respect to the diameter and can be, uh, you can achieve higher speeds uh, and applications uh, are greater output and uh, really good mixing. Uh, these are continuous mixtures, which are again advancements. Uh, so there are some experiments again, you can find it out uh, regarding HDP with calcium carbonate. Uh, the feed rate will have no impact on the particle size and particle size is very important from the morphological perspective. And rotor speed doesn't have any impact on the dispersional characteristic, breaking it down. Then PLA talc, higher filler loading. When we are talking about adding talc in PLA, which is polylactic acid, uh, you find with higher filler loading, uh, more PLA degradation would be observed. And 12% uh, is there for uh, FCM and 50% for twin screw extruder. Then you have PPPA, that is polypropylene, polyamide, six blends, uh, less aggressive design. Uh, so you will have uh, lesser uh, values than with screw extruder and more aggressive design will give you lesser values for uh, twin screw extruders than the other uh, continuous mixers. 
then we have planetary extruders so it's a ring kind of structure that you will see around your uh, main not exactly a rotor because this is stationary in this case so central screw is stationary and the other ones are moving inside their grooves so 12 closely intermeshing core rotating screws arranged in a ring which compensates for the deflection of the screw bimodal elements are popular l by d is around 20 and uh, you can employ it for rubber and pharmaceutical compounding. Uh, we are talking about uh, these uh, drugs being mixed and compounded. Fed bottle recycled bottle grade material is very popular in this case, and the output can be really high up to even 4 tons per hour. So, 1500 to 4 tons per hour can be there. Then you have roller extruder. So, now the central screw is also rotating along with the ones that are there on the side, right? So, the central member is also rotating along with the ones which are rotating on the edge. So you can see over here. The roller is at the center forming a sun and the planet resembling screws which are six or more have a groove merrill with a delta of around 0.25 millimeter cube. So you get both dispersive and distributive mixing meaning that you are going to reduce the size of the fillers. Along with that you are going to spatially distribute it within the polymer mixture which will really give you a boost in terms of uh, properties especially something like modulus. Good temperature control and heat exchange. Specific energy consumption is uh, around 0 0.08 kilowatt hour per kg against 0.12 in twin and 0.17 in single screw. So it is almost going down by, if I talk in terms of single screw, it is more than 200% reduction. And when we're talking about twin screw, it is around 40% reduction in specific con in energy consumption, which is going to reduce the power requirement that you have in your line. Then you have these gear extruders which have further lower energy consumption up to 70 percent less than that of single screw along with the gear pump uh, so specific, specific energy requirements of uh, around less than uh, 45 watt hour per kg and lower extruded temperatures are observed in comparison with single screw extruder without impacting the kinetics of vulcanization for rubbers and you would find that single screw extruders will tremendously generate a lot of temperature so if you look at this figure a gear extruder doesn't increase the temperature along with an increase in the pressure, but single screw extruder, as soon as the pressure keeps on increasing, the temperature also keeps on increasing. So this is how the gear extruder generally look like. So these are reciprocating extruders. So rotation and reciprocation of single screw with split flights and pins which are put in the barrel wall. They improve the mixing and melt quality. So this is synonymous to what injection molding is about. The only thing is key. Uh, there we will have a specific movement in injection. It improves melt and uh, mixing and melt quality, better process control and increased throughput. Split barrel is used to facilitate the ease of cleaning. So you can have a split barrel. So barrel can open and you can clean it properly. Creates a pulsating flow and uh, single screw extruder change charge is necessary. It is very expensive. So you still need to feed it through a single screw extruder, which will be a uh, you know, put at a prior uh, or maybe the, the mother baby concept that we just discussed in the last question answer session. What are the environmental considerations and role of compounding in uh, extrusion? The extrusion compounding industry can work towards a more sustainable and environment friendly future in order to have an economic growth with the environment protection to ensure a better future with use of sustainable materials, recycling, energy efficiency, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Why are we talking about greenhouse gas emission reduction? Whenever we are doing recycling, we are substituting virgin material with recycled material. Now, the virgin material, when it had to be synthesized, would have taken a lot of energy to make that monomer from monomer to polymer, and then polymer would have been converted into a product. So instead of that, you save that energy and you just provide some amount of heat energy to the material that has come back in the loop. So this is resulting in resulting in greenhouse gas emissions reduction. Prevention of pollution, life cycle assessment and compliance with the regulations.